looks like an AA meeting. Um, so my name's Jess and yeah, I'm a makeup artist but I body paint as well and I'm a face painter. Um, and occasionally at Christmas I'm an elf. <laughs> Bea is, yeah, we met at a gig because our boyfriends were in the same band together so yeah, she was Miss Finland in 2014 but she's also an amazing makeup artist. So yeah, I, I always knew I wanted to work in film. Um, and and then I used to do a bit of acting and sort of theatre stuff and I'd always end up doing the makeup so I went to London College of Fashion um, lots of years ago and I did image styling for performance it doesn't actually exist anymore it was basically a course um, that taught you like hair and makeup for film I was basically working for two years full-time as a waitress at the weekends and then I I did all this sort of work for free, which is bad because our industry is bad for that. They kind of make you feel like you have to do all this, I don't know, work experience when you really should, you're just being taken advantage of. I originally thought I'd just do film because that was like what I wanted to do, but the reality of film for me was really long days, like super boring, standing around on set, just like touch ups, touch ups, touch ups. Um, and then on one job, I met this woman who was amazing, got on really well, and she was like, oh, do you want to come and do festivals with me this summer? So we were just face painted for like the whole summer, every weekend. Um, and yeah, I just learned on the job, basically. Yeah, I had an experience of, um, yeah, makeup from college. But face painting and body painting is quite different. Um, it's different skills, because it's like a whole different technique and different brushes and I guess it's good to do, like, it's really good to do both because when you do makeup, you have an eye for um, placement of things and what is good. But I think what face painting teaches you more is to be creative and just to, like, think on your feet. And because um, I think in film, you're, you're kind of just doing, like, one look or a few looks. Whereas, like, when you're face painting, it's like every few minutes, it's like something different, something different, something different. So, yeah. From face painting, it got to, like, arms and then you, I started getting booked from doing like zoo party, zoo project parties to so like animals, like tigers, um, like the corporate scene for makeup is is actually really creative and fun because they have the budget to pay you properly um, and then they're like here's our vision, just like can you make this um, crazy glitter monkey who's like got prosthetics on, he's like running around the crowds but I mean it's quite it's, it is a bit soulless because people are there to drink really expensive champagne and they go to these parties all the time so they don't really appreciate it. I guess the whole the person's naked thing is like a, I don't know part of this that scene as well like it's yeah the whole body so it's kind of I guess it's living art basically. Does it phase you at all when you are painting a naked person? Is it something you think no. about at all, or is it just? Um, I think when you would get when I was trained, because I went to Delamar and I did a week's body paint course there. And when you're trained, you kind of are given like the conversation um, that you should have with people, and just be like, okay, this is going to happen. Um, it might be like, uncomfortable at a certain point, um, and then you just have to keep checking in with them, and just remember that like there were because obviously you get like, so immersed in your creativity, you have to remember they're like a living person and just making sure they've got water and they're, yeah, that they're like, okay, because I've heard stories of people like fainting like while they've been body painted. It is kind of weird um, experience because you are completely naked, um, but it's like you're wearing clothes. I thought I'd be really self-conscious, but I actually felt fine. And yeah, you kind of had, it was kind of liberating, I guess. So uh, what um, advice would you give for someone else who's looking at this video and thinking, I'd like to become a body painter. How do I do that? Um, just start. <laughs> just like buy some paints and go for it. I'm really lucky because I, Lots of my friends um, are models already, so it's really handy. But I mean, anyone can be a model. So just your best friend or whoever, um, just get together. Like um, maybe there's a lot of groups actually on Facebook where um, like 
face painters sort of have a forum and they're talking to each other and sometimes they have do these things called jams and they get it's kind of like band, when bands jam it's like painters get together and they try out new things and they show each other their skills and kind of do a skill swap so that's something really good to look to look for you could start with trying on your arms and legs and trying out different things but in terms of paint like when you're learning the brands you use don't make such a difference to the way that you paint um, so um, if you're using brand like Snazaru, which is like such a well-known brand, it's it's quite watery. That like it doesn't go on as well as other brands. Whereas if you get someone something like Chameleon or Diamond Effects or Wolf, that that pigment is so strong, it's amazing. You can just yeah, you don't need so many layers. Like it just really pops. It's really good. So yeah. Where I look for inspiration, I. I go on Pinterest a lot, um, just like uh, just like around London, I guess. There's always like crazy pop-ups going on. Um, going to art galleries, just like always taking pictures. I'm always taking pictures of anything that um, I see that's interesting, like some graffiti or. Um... So it can be something not related to body painting. Oh yeah. You'll be inspired by that bit of art. And yeah, definitely. Like the god of body painting, um, Phyllis Cohen. Yeah, she is the god. She's the best. Why? Um, just like all of her work, like she's um, it's just so effortless. Like she did all the Pink Floyd, I think she did all the Pink Floyd um, album covers on the backs of people, the original one. And um, she did David Bowie a lot. Um, she was amazing. But then now she's like doing face lace, which is really cool because it's all just stuff. I'm actually going to use it in my demo. Just because I'm quite a messy artist, so when I'm just like painting, it like goes everywhere. When you use face lace, it's just like on and off. So, yeah, it's really good. How would you describe your style? Abstract. <laughs> um, yeah, just like I, I like really like really painty stuff where you can see the brush strokes. Um, I don't like work that's perfect. I think it's um, yeah. It freaks me out. <laughs> so if I, I don't know. I, I mean, I think it's amazing when other people do it, but when I do it myself, I'm just like, oh. Um, so I just, I kind of like to paint something and then sort of mess it up a bit because I think it's, I think it's more evoking to have like texture and yeah, more brushstrokey things just to make it, I don't know, more interesting, I guess. It's funny. I always talk to my face painting friends about this. Everyone's got like their own style. Um, and you kind of like show each other things, but then they'll take it on and then add it to their style. So you, you can't, it, it's just so individual, but I think it's amazing. And I think it's quite, yeah, because I'm quite a like scatty person. So I think that's part of it. I can't be like a perfect person. I'm always late. I'm always, I don't know, um, running around like, that's just me as a person. So I think when my, my art comes out, I'm just, that's just, who I am, so that sounds really wanky, I'm sorry. <laughs> A little bit bad, <laughs>I don't know, there's different websites you can go on like Mandy and stuff and they are looking like they want people to work for like really low rates. So you start doing work for really low rates and then you meet people on set and they keep calling you back and then eventually you get more money. So would you recommend that route? Um I don't know if it's something creative that I want to do, then I'll do it. Do you know what I mean? That's the creative industry. But the other way that I've got work is through Facebook. Facebook's really good. Um, sometimes Instagra Instagram is quite good if you put your stuff out there. And friend, like friend of a friend sort of thing. That's always like the best way. And just meeting other face painters. And often um, when you reach out to people, people are actually really nice. And if you say, I want to learn or I want to assist, um, then people will like come back to you and say oh, and be really helpful. Yeah, just keep keep approaching people, like don't be scared. Um, yeah. I have a big problem with art galleries because I just find them so stale and you're just, there's so much more immersive things that you can do. So I just wanted to have this connection between music and art. We had this UV space um, and all these like UV painted dancers and then the band was UV and there was like a contortionist there was all this dancing and like crazy contortion and then it just turned into this like big rave in the end and people were getting painted and just like 
kind of like watch, watching the body paint um, and some of the um, models were painted like into the background so it was kind of like this sort of live art um, immersive yeah madness um, so yeah I think that I'm the most proud of that because it was just the, the best thing was that just seeing everyone just having fun um, and just being so up for it and I think that's like the point of being an artist because it is just fun it's fun Instagram and things are so good now because you can you instantly have like a portfolio and you can just have your work out there and it's really good for connecting with other artists and like collaborating. Yeah, just keep like reaching out to people and collaborating basically. Even if like you just, you paint something and you're like, oh my god, that's awful, never gonna paint again. You just have to keep going. Like I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, just see it as a process rather than like an endpoint. Don't expect to make a lot of money, but um, it's yeah, it's it's super fun. Sometimes body paint can pay really well for corporate jobs um, and like, face painting is always really good. That's kind of saved me like the whole time face painting because um, once you like, have a skill, people are always going to want face painters. So that, that sort of is my like, bread and butter money. If you're starting out, I'd make a portfolio, a good portfolio and then um, get in contact with people. Um, get in contact with people for assisting work. Just look online for face painters. There's, um, there's like a range of different jobs. There's like jobs when you're starting out that sort of pay like, I don't know, 20 pounds an hour. It's quite good to learn that way. And there's also loads of the glitter, the glitter team as well, where it's not that technical. Um, it's quite good to get in that way. And then once you're sort of in, then you can just build up to the more sort of um, your better paid jobs but I guess it's like any industry really. No I just want to keep like working with different people and keep collaborating. Um, I really want to be an art therapist with this um, art therapy company called Yusuf. They basically just keeps kids off the streets by doing all this, it's, a lot of it is music production and just giving them skills and stuff to basically stop them getting into gangs. Yeah, I think it's really important for mental health problems um, to have um, like a creative space. Anything is possible um, and I don't think you have to like struggle as an artist like if you, if you just like have business mind and you just stay on top of things then yeah just approach it like a business but also stay really creative. Mm -hmm.